um, they're a different type of team. Dallas has running backs that can go downhill. The offensive line, they want to run the football. Kansas City doesn't even want to run the football. They no, don't want to run no. it. And they, uh, they, they pile up 200 yards by mistake uh, because it's so easy uh, to run the football against the Philadelphia Eagles. And I... I Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hit. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. No, I 1,000% agree with you. Uh, let's hear what was being said during the press conference as well as in the locker room when we check in with our friend John McMullen right now, and he's presented by Mesa Law and Associates. Need a tough injury lawyer? Call Mesa and Associates. John McMullen, welcome in. Thanks for coming on with us. What was Nick Sirianni's overall message in his post-game press conference to the assembled media? Uh, I think it was a lot like this game. You're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure out where to start with this team. I mean, I, I think if you look offensively, you got to be pretty happy. I think we were back to the... Uh, week one game plan with the quick hits out of Jalen Hurts' hand, get him some confidence. Uh, they moved the football, I think, you know, well over 400 in, uh, uh, total yards, 461. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can't ask for much more from the offensive side. And then you start talking about the defense, obviously six touchdowns and, you know, Patrick Mahomes uh, kneeled at the end of the game. So you can't count that. So, Six out of seven touchdowns um, for the Kansas City Chiefs. And the one time was obviously the they had the good pass rush, ended up in the interception. Every time they touched the football, uh, they scored, basically. Um, and obviously, that's not good enough. Uh, now, Kansas City's the most explosive offensive team. We understand that. But that doesn't mean you can have a performance like you had today. We have nothing. I mean, even in arena football, when they used to play that, did they still play that? You Not have so a much. Stop occasionally. <laughs> occasionally. Um, I, this defense has some major, major issues. And I think it starts with the linebackers because they can't stop the run. Look, this is not Dallas. We talked about Dallas. Dallas has um, – they're a different type of team. Dallas has running backs that can go downhill. The offensive line, they want to run the football. Kansas City doesn't even want to run the football. They no, don't want to run no. it. And they, uh, they, they pile up 200 yards by mistake uh, because it's so easy uh, to run the football against the Philadelphia Eagles. And I, I don't think that's an in-season fix. That's an out-of-season fix. That's where you look at, 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 at Howie Roseman and say, okay, you don't – you don't allocate assets to that particular position and you have it for years and now you're reaping what you kind of sowed as an organization when you're trying to trot out. Alex Singleton is your best linebacker and Eric Wilson mm-hmm. as some kind of run stuffer. It's just not going to work. Hey, Jeff, what did defensive players say? If you guys had a chance to talk to the defensive players, what did defensive players say about this performance today? Yeah, I, I mean, Slade dropped a couple S bombs. I think about three or four uh, 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 shits. We can say that since we're on YouTube. Oh, I'm on six ABC. I uh, think yeah. I can are you, are you allowed to say that? That's a yeah. 15 well, yard we'll, penalty we'll on knock you. Knock it out. We'll knock I think he said out. Creek. I think he said Creek. Yeah. That's my yeah. favorite show too. That's my we'll, favorite show. We'll knock it out. Yeah, in post production. But Slade that, that's said a 15 yard so penalty on you. Say Slay, if Slay's live, he said it a bunch of times. Uh, and they have to fix their stuff. So we use the word stuff. Um, look, Kansas City's tremendous. We know Patrick Mahomes. It's always impressive to see Tyreek Hill live because there's so many fast players in the NFL. And he's just faster than everybody else. It's, so, it's unbelievable uh, to watch on the field. And I know Jonathan Gannon spoke in the week leading up to the game. Uh, and he said how well he tracks the football, which is rare for a speed guy. We saw a speed guy here who could track the football 
for years in Deshaun Jackson. You bring up the Randy Mosses. But those are deep guys. They're down the field. Tyree Kill does it intermediately as well. I've yeah. never seen anything like it for somebody who can run like him. And he's really difficult to stop. But that said, you got to bracket him and you got to make sure other players don't beat you. Um, Eagles weren't able to do that today. Six mm-hmm. out of seven tells you all you need to know. It's just we didn't see a punter. I didn't get to see Aaron Seacoss today. I know. Our favorite, <laughs> our favorite punter. We didn't see him. Yeah, yeah Devin's favorite player. Either punter. Either punter. My MVP. Yeah that, yeah. that Kansas City defense, by the way, they're not winning the Super Bowl unless no. Steve Spagnuolo can no. figure something out there because they are they are terrible. Mm-hmm. Mm. John, uh, first of all, I have to say your McMullen Mafia is alive and well in the comments and saying that you Shem, you can go in and, and play, uh, what, linebacker for the Eagles. You can play on the D-line as well. You're getting a few call-outs. So just thought you'd appreciate that. Um, if well, I got the interest. football IQ to play linebacker. But I, I, think, <laughs> you know, I think that's I why have, they want you there. I, I don't um, think I have. I probably have the size, but I don't have the speed. Eh, well probably better than what we're working with now. So, um, <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> just speaking of truth here, taking guys. shots. Look at her. Oh. Uh, well, I actually wanted to, like, you know, we've been talking about defense a lot uh, and obviously the very frustrating penalties, but I want to ask you about offense with three touchdowns called back because of penalties and flags and just so many missed opportunities, especially in the red zone. Watching it was excruciating. It got to the point where I didn't even want to celebrate a touchdown because I knew I'd see a flag 15 seconds later. Um, was that addressed in, in any post-game presser? Yeah, I, I, Nick talked about all three of them. Uh, the, the Andre Dillard uh, downfield penalty said wasn't Andre's fault. That's a situation, you know, that's a tough kind of, balancing act because you have a quarterback that wants to extend plays all the time uh and when you do that as an offensive lineman you don't know what's going on behind you uh and if you step downfield it's been a point of emphasis in the nfl um so nick kind of said maybe we have to stop calling those types of plays if they're going to call it that tightly uh Devontae smith uh, same as Jalen Rager, he's got to be more disciplined at really at the start of his route to give him a, a little bit more room. And that's a concern when you have young receivers because NFL cornerbacks are going to be physical down the field. And I know people say you're not supposed to touch guys, but watch any NFL game. You see guys bodying you up down the field, especially when you're near the sideline. They're going to make sure you step out of bounds. So that's something I I just think is a young player um, making a mistake similar to Jalen Rager. And unfortunately, those are kind of the growing pains we talked about when we started this season, said you had a a rookie receiver uh, and two second year receivers who haven't played a lot of football. You're going to have some growing pains. You're going to have some mistakes. And those guys are going to learn from that type of stuff as they move forward and understand and correct those mistakes. And the third one, gee, I can't even remember. What was the third one? Or think of white side, illegal block on a pick play. Oh, yeah, play. That, mm-hmm. that one, you know, J.J.'s got to be a little more subtle about that. Exactly. That's just the way it is. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I saw a lot of people say uh, that was a bad call by the officials. And to Nick's credit, he, he said the officials have, have a really difficult job. And he wasn't leading on that as a crutch. I got to tell you, when I saw that, they always call that. I mean, when you when you don't put some subtlety into your rub routes, they're going to call it. And right. he didn't, and they mm-hmm. called it. Mm-hmm. Uh, John, I want to two two quick things. One on the uh, uh, Devontae Smith touchdown that was called back. I know he was out of bounds, clearly out of bounds, and they were hand fighting, and he went out. What I mean, isn't there a rule about establishing position in the NFL? I thought if you get two feet back in bounds, you're you've established position. Yeah, I mean, I'll have to watch it again on yeah. film. There is a rule, yeah, if you establish yourself back in bounds. Uh, I, I don't know what the what the officiating uh, thought process was. I mean, he stepped out of bounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, they evidently didn't come to the conclusion that you did, Mark. But I, right. I have to look at that uh, <clears throat> on the film and see how close it was. I, I don't think 
and just watching it. It's kind of difficult to watch it live. You get a sure. replay. Um, but I, I don't think, you know, they're going to need you to be in bounds for two, two, two kind of steps. And I think he came right back in bounds and caught mm. the football. But I'm I will not sure about that. Yeah, I think the second foot came down and the ball was, was in his gut. Um, so uh, last thing from me, uh, as far as this, this particular aspect goes, the first possession of the game, they drive down the field, they get to the fourth and three. Uh, you know, fourth and three, uh, and they burn a timeout in that situation there. Was that on Sirianni? Did he say after the game whether or not it was him calling the timeout, whether or not it was Jalen Hurts calling the timeout? No, that was on Nick. That was on the head coach. He he got to play in late, and, and he took the blame for that. Oh. And by the way, I think if he's going to call timeout, you've got to go for fourth down again. Yes, absolutely. Coming absolutely. Out, uh, uh, you, to me, that's an opponent situation because I got a lot of people on Twitter like you got to take the points, not against the Kansas City Chiefs, because if you're scoring field goals, you're going to lose. You're yeah. going to lose yeah. the game. Yeah. And I thought his thought process going for it was the correct one. Uh, you have to understand the opponent. You have to understand you're going to have to to score touchdowns and match them. And I think after calling timeout, he should have just doubled down and said, all right, I didn't get it in. I didn't get to play in quickly enough. Let's just run a better play. Let's get our feet under us. Let's, let's make sure uh, we can burn and go in and get the touchdown. I think that would have been more valuable, even if they don't get it. I think you got to signal that to your team. Yep. And you also have to, as I said, you have to understand the opponent and what you're up against. Hey, hey John, uh, it's becoming a broken record, the abundance of penalties with this team. Um, in your estimation, who does the, who does the onus fall on more the coaches or the players themselves? Um, I, I think, you know, when you talk about things like pre-snap penalties, I think that's a player issue. You know, if you see Josh sweat, jump off sides, I mean, what, what can you do? Hey, don't jump off sides. Look at the football. You're right there, uh, on the defensive line. Obviously, we know they're trying to get uh, uh, as quick a jump as, as to get on the pass rush as possible. As I said, Nick said the illegal downfield stuff. I mean, he even said that wasn't Dillard's fault uh, because, you know, remember, the football's designed to come out. So in the offensive lineman's head, you got to block to this and then boom, right. go. Yep. But the football's not coming out. So that's been an issue. And Nick says it's it's been a point of emphasis, which you can see around the league as well. Uh, so that kind of stuff is, is sort of tricky. Um, the personal fouls, I know everybody's going to get on Derek Barnett. That was a reputation penalty. I mean, that was a reputation penalty as far as you're hitting a superstar quarterback and you're a guy known for personal fouls. They're going to throw that flag. So. I mean, I, I'm of the belief the NFL is over-legislated. I've talked about it for years and years and years. There's penalties galore in every game. But the Eagles are last. They're number 42, uh, 32 in the league. Sorry. Uh, they're number 32 of 32. So even in a year where everybody's getting penalties amped up, they're the worst. So you got to figure it out. you got to figure something out. Something that is uh, pretty polarizing in the comments on reactions is Jalen Hurts performance. I thought he played well overall. Yes. Uh, I know some people don't agree. So John, what are your thoughts on Jalen Hurts today? Yeah, tough. Nick called it one of the best quarterbacking performances he's ever seen. Yeah, I don't get that. Oh, I'm not I don't go want that to go far. that far. <laughs> I'm not going to go that far. Uh, I thought for the most part, <laughs> I, I, I thought he played well. Mm -hmm. I thought, again, we were back to the week one mindset. I think that's when he's at his best. Get the football out quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. Bubble screens, you know, quick throws. Uh, and from there, get him some confidence. But there were some throws down the field, typical. Um, first drive, he had Zach Ertz open for a touchdown. It should have been an easy touchdown. Badly overthrew him. Um when Dallas's touchdown got called back, they sh should have scored again. He had Greg Ward wide open. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people said Greg got two hands on it. He should have caught it. Man, that yeah. should have been an easy touchdown. Yeah. An right, easy right. touchdown. 
and he made that really, really difficult for the receiver who wasn't able to catch it. So when he's throwing the football from the pocket, now in the fourth quarter, he threw this out pattern to Zach Ertz down the field that was perfect. Yeah. Um, so it's it, it's the same lack of consistency. It's not that he can't do it. It's just not consistent. And when it's not consistent, it usually has to do with footwork and – He's got to he's got to sharpen that up. But he was a playmaker today. Look, when you pile up as much yardage as they did, as much points as they did, you should win the football game. But they were playing Kansas City, and th- and there's two things to that. Okay, Kansas City's offense we know is spectacular, but their defense is really really bad. So how much was that added effectiveness of the Eagles' offense due to the fact that? That group is really, really poor, and on top of it, they didn't have Frank Clark and two cornerbacks. So it's probably a little bit of both, but I think overall, certainly, I think this was the best game that Jalen Hurts played this season. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Uh, Certainly, the throws that you mentioned, yeah, I'm sure he'd want to have those back, but overall, very good game by Jalen Hurts. Uh, yeah. Defensively speaking, we're, we're talking a lot about the linebackers. We asked you about the defensive side of the ball earlier. I want to ask you this, though. When it comes to <laughs> filling in for Brandon Graham, when will we see that guy step up? When, like, I know it's supposed to be a committee here, John, but when will we see that guy or those guys step up to be the guy that sets the edge or be the guy to get the sack or the tackle for loss when we really need it? Maybe somebody other than Javon Hargrave, who is not a defensive end, a defensive tackle. Who and when will we see step up? Well, nobody's going to step up because I, I think people are, are, recognizing, <laughs> not, not this are, are recognizing how good Brandon was. You know, Brandon is probably one of the most underappreciated players. I've talked about it for years, probably in Philadelphia history, um, because of the way his career started. You remember, he was labeled a bust really early in his career. And all of a sudden, he Mm -hmm. starts to get it. He was a late bloomer, and he turns into one of the best edge defenders in football. But he doesn't have a lot of sacks. And when people talk about defensive ends or edge rushers, they always want to see 15 sacks. And Brandon's, I think, as high as nine and a half. So they always look at him and says, well, he's not not a great player. He's a good player. No, he is a great player. Mm -hmm. And he's really a good player when it comes to setting the edge and the running game. Uh, And that is so valuable. Um, Even when you're talking about running the football up, people say, well, what's if you're running it up the middle, what does the defensive end have to do with that? Well, a lot, because if you set the edge and all all of a sudden you can crash inside and help everybody else, it makes it far more difficult for the offense. Eagles don't have that right now. The hope is that Josh Sweat turns into a, a difference maker, but more as a pass rusher than a run defender. They just don't have that player to set the edge in the running game without Brandon Graham. Right. Uh, last thing for me anyway, John, uh, any further news on Lane Johnson? Anybody say anything about what's going on with Lane? Uh, the Eagles would not uh, go into that. Nick said we're not going to talk about that right now. I, I can tell you that and I think Derek is the one that reported this. The original plan was to start Jack Driscoll, right guard, move Landon Dickerson, the left guard. Right. That made sense because Landon, Isaac Sayamalo is out for the year. Landon's the guy they want to get the reps in every single game. So you might as well put him at left guard, keep him there for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. And then when Brandon Brooks comes back. And then you, they found out, couple hours before the game they wouldn't have lane and all of a sudden they have to go to plan c and plan c was playing jack driscoll who was supposed to play right guard back out at right tackle they put nate herbig at right guard and i gotta tell you you gotta give jeff stoutman a a ton of credit because the (laughs) offensive line is fine yeah i I mean i know people are going to kill dillard for the penalties but i'm telling you nick specifically said the illegal downfields weren't his fault. Mm-hmm. Um, that offensive line was fine, and eighty percent of it was gone from week one. Mm-hmm. The only man left standing, as usual, was Jason Kelsey, and everybody mm-hmm. else was a reserve. 
and they played well enough to win. They really did. Mm-hmm. Uh, John McMullen, thank you so much. Really appreciate appreciate you coming on here. The live post game show. We'll catch up with you again next week, my friend. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. Thanks, John. John McMullen uh, joining us right there on the live post game show. Uh, all right, look. I know I highlighted two throws from Jalen Hurts that I, I'm sure he'd love to have back. And I'm acknowledging they did not lose this game because of Jalen Hurts, but I would not call this game the greatest game he, what, no. he'd ever no. seen from Jalen Hurts, anything like that. I, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, and, and, see, and see, that's another thing. Nick Sirianni has to be careful what he says, mm-hmm. especially in situations like this. When, when it's already raining down criticism on you and your team because things have not come together. So don't give the media and the fan base any additional firepower when you make comments like that. Okay, he played a good game, maybe a great game, but to say it's one of the best performances you've ever seen and you've been around football your whole life and you say that, no, 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 no. You, you got to be, be a little more cautious about what you say, especially in Philadelphia. All right, we're going to break it down a little bit further when we come back in a second. Uh, highlight a, little, a couple other things said during the media sessions today after the game. Following, unfortunately, the Eagles lost today to the Kansas City Chiefs 42-30, to 30, but we are exclusively presented by Ocean Casino Resort here on Live Post Game Show. Book your next weekend at Ocean Casino and go for the win. We'll be back on 6abc.com and the Jacob Media YouTube channel in a few. <laughs> 